Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 178 of Who's the Big Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode it is a big one, the precursor to the 2036-37 European season. We are going to start off with a domestic recap, also do a quick recap as well on what happened at both the Euros as well as Copa America off the back of that, a transfer update where a bit more happened than I was anticipating. We'll do a squad overview for this upcoming European season. Then we will play RB Leipzig in the UEFA Super Cup, try and win that for the second time in a row. Not too long off the back of that, we should have our youth intake and then we'll do an update on what has happened with the other Icelandic teams in European qualifying before we have the group stage draws for the various competitions obviously relevant to us is the draw for this season's Champions League. So it could be a big episode, get settled in. And if you are looking forward to it, make sure to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated. But we have gone forward a few months off the back of the end of last week, our fourth straight Champions League final. And thankfully, our second straight win over Manchester United. If you missed that episode, I'll leave a link to it in the top right corner. Obviously, a bit's gone on since then. We'll start off with a little bit of a recap of our results since then. And thankfully, domestically, it has been very, very good. A big chunk of gameplay that we've got through over the weekend here. And thankfully, everything has been good. Green Dots have made our way through to the semi-finals of the Icelandic Cup and have not dropped a point so far in the domestic league here. In Iceland as well, very happy because for most of the early stages of that bit off the back of the Champions League final, there were players missing on both Copa America and Euro duty. That was around about until the middle of July, so quite thankful that we did get through that patch unscathed and off the back of that since those players have been coming back, albeit some players have been going away on holidays because they've been quite tired off the back of that international duty, but we have still managed to go through unbeaten, so we are through to the semi-finals of the Molka Bigger in the Icelandic Cup. Big tie there as we take on Phil Kier and what does look like the strongest of those semi-finals. The other semi-final is between Huff Nafshador and Akronesson in terms of the league. Obviously, we are on top of the table and with quite a good gap as well. 11 points clear of Phil Kier who find themselves three points above HK at this stage with about eight games left in the domestic season. We'll do another little recap of this later on in today's episode because we will play a few more games before we do get into the draw for this season's Champions League. But before we do have a look at the transfers that we have made in and amongst that period, a quick update on what did happen at both the Euros and Copa America where we did have some players featuring first off the Euros where we certainly had a lot more players at that tournament. It was hosted by both Holland and Belgium. Belgium usually pretty strong in FM and as you see there on screen, they did make their way through all the way to the final, but they were upset somewhat by Ognja Mizkic's Serbia. They have picked up the Euros here in 2036, beating Belgium in the final. Belgium, including four of our players here at Volsunga, Filippo Dinelli, Richard Waswa, Alain Basicki, and Jonathan Berger, the recent addition from Chelsea, who we did sign during last week, but they in the end got beaten. 2-0 in the final by Serbia. We'll go back a little bit, just to update on some teams, so I think might be worth mentioning the second round. England did make their way through their group, but were somewhat upset there by Spain 2-1 in that first knockout round there of the Euros. But they did come out of a group which also had France in it. And that was the big upset here in this year's Euros. Of course, France, a team which did have both Lasana Dumbia and Benvenu Bayer with them from us here at Volsunga. But quite luckily for us, they actually didn't make their way out of that group which England were in. In fact, they actually finished bottom of the group, losing all three games. So thankfully, we got the French players back quite soon, which was quite relieving because Bruno Costa is still out with that serious injury he picked up prior to the Champions League final. So having a few midfielders back was quite useful so we could play some strong players in that midfield. But France having a real shocker there in Group E. Poland actually finished top of that group. Sweden in second and England got through as one of the better third place qualifiers. So a very interesting group there. Interesting to see that England and France both struggled in terms of the French team struggling. That actually benefited us a little bit, as I said, with both Lasana Dumbia and Ben Benu Bayer coming back a little bit sooner 
than we expected and now over to Copa America where we did have Augustine Agatigare with Argentina and unfortunately his team did not make the final of Copa America in the end it was Brazil picking it up yet again in the save so far in this save they have won it every single year since 2021 when Argentina did pick it up but Brazil continued their domination there with a 2-1 win over Paraguay and in the end it was Argentina actually missed out in the third place playoff to Ecuador on penalties albeit if we do have a look at this game you will see that Agustin Agatigare actually had a really good game up front there for Argentina scored two goals with an 8.2 kept them right in the game unfortunately though he was one of the players who did miss their penalty so a little bit of a mixed game there for Agustin Agatigare but on the whole he had quite a good tournament but couldn't quite lead Argentina into a top three spot there in Copa America as I mentioned yet again Brazil have picked that up so that is what's happened in terms of interesting results over the period that we have played since the Champions League final and now it is time for a bit of a transfer update as I said a little bit more happened here than I was expecting as you can see by this transfer history screen we'll start off with the outs because that will explain some of the ins that we have made on the other side I think we need to pick things up from where we did loan out Alfonso Cruz the first off Phila Jakubov he was a homegrown centre back here at the club but didn't have too much potential we have let him go to Sigma Olamalk he was signing for those guys on a pre-contract so we got a bit of money before he left us on a free there 2.5 million for Philippe Jakubov as he has gone back to the Czech Republic there to play in the Fortuna Liga not a bad deal there for a player who he signed back in 2032 for only £400,000 next up on this list we do have Hans Voss this was a very very interesting transfer we decided to let him go because his potential actually dropped down around that three star mark with two and a half star current ability he was homegrown in club and nation as well but I thought that offer there from Dortmund was too good to turn down of £35 million for so our backup right winger Hans Voss he has left he has gone to Germany to join up with Dortmund we signed him a few years ago it was really good for us in domestic competitions as well as stepping in occasionally off the bench in the Champions League you can see there is record for us pretty good but we've made nearly about double what we paid for him there when we did sign him off Ajax back in 2033 18.5 million he has gone to Dortmund for 35 million pounds and the next big transfer which does impact us here at Volsunga going into this next European season was the sale of our experienced Norwegian goalkeeper these days the backup to Carl Wollen and Peter Weilervik he has gone to Lille for 20 million for a player who went at the club had two star current ability and potential these days at 31 years old I think getting 20 million for him is actually quite a good bit of business so that has meant we have had to sign a new backup goalkeeper here at Volksunga we did sign him all the way back in 2029 from Molde in Norway for only 2.4 million pounds he'd been quite good for us as our starting goalkeeper up until we did sign Carl Wallen a few seasons ago prior to those last few Champions League wins and getting 20 million pounds for him at the age of 31 years old as I said does seem like that was a very very good bit of business indeed and with that money it did allow us to reinvest in some players after we did spend most of our money earlier this season on that signing of Jonathan Berger from Chelsea but alongside that we did sell a few other players from the club here at Volsunga some youngsters who weren't going to get much game time here and did not have much potential the first of those Anthony Wright he has gone to Liverpool the 19 year old Cypriot for a hundred thousand pounds that is another deal where the player was going to leave us on a free transfer at the end of this current Icelandic season anyway so we've just got a little bit of money for him instead of letting him go for absolutely nothing and the same does apply for Thomas Bookweld he is a right back who is from Denmark he has gone to Mijerland exact same deal as that prior one with Anthony Wright he has gone for £65,000 with those departures it has meant that we have had to replenish some positions here at Volsung and most notably a backup right winger to replace Hans Voss as well as a backup goalkeeper to fill in for Puerta Huel Lurvix we did sign some replacements in those positions and first off is Melizio Menga we have signed him out of Boca Juniors for only six million pounds when you consider that that is the replacement for Hans Voss that is quite a good bit of business not quite as good as Hans Voss was when he did leave the club but already looks like he might be able to just go a little bit further 
than Hans Volstead. He is Argentinian, but also part Italian. So he is EU for the domestic competitions. He has that little bit of potential, two and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential for six million pounds. I think this was quite a good deal to boost the bank here at Volsunga, signing him out of Boca Juniors after he did not do a lot for them so far in his career. Had five appearances last season, but already he's had four starts here at Volsunga, two goals and four assists. Looks like he should do a very good job for us as a backup to Agatigare when he is needed. And the other signing, which does influence our first team here, at Volsunga for this upcoming season. That is Robson out of Gremio. He is the replacement for Puerto Juan Lurvik. So again, we make a little bit of profit on that deal. He is a foreigner, so it's not ideal. But to be fair, he was the best option that was available to us as a backup goalkeeper. And we do have a few more foreign spots available to us now, which we will discuss when we get to the squad overview. But two-star current ability, three-and-a-half-star gold potential, four-and-a-half-star white potential here for the 21-year-old. Brazilian goalkeeper, quite a promising guy, should do a good job for us as a backup to Cal Volan. Obviously, Cal Volan, very, very highly rated these days, so he's going to be a backup for quite a long time, or at least until we get a very, very good offer for this young Brazilian goalkeeper. He's gone around Brazil a little bit, was at Atletico Mineiro for the early stages of his career, was then bought by Grêmio a few seasons ago for £9.75 million, and now he comes to us for 12.25 million, as I said, as the backup to Cal Volan. Obviously, we hadn't quite spent all that money that we did get from those sales of both Peter Hale Lubick and Hans Voss. That did mean that we could add a few more players who did have some future potential who could go now under 18s and end up being some future homegrown club and nation players. We signed a few players on free transfers as well. So we'll quickly go through some of these guys. First off, Felipe Alvarez, we signed him out of Real Madrid's academy, one and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential, he comes to us on a free transfer, does the young midfielder, next up another free transfer, this is Jakub Zerbonski, I believe is how you might say that name, he is a German left winger, two star current ability, three and a half star potential, thought he was worth giving a shot to on a free transfer as well, at only 17 years old, next up we signed two players, who when they came to the club, we're both called one. So what we've done instead of giving them numbers and calling them one one or one two, because we're trying to keep the numbers here in the save for players who are criminals. But nonetheless, we just gave them what their last names were and added them to their names there on screen. So things don't get too confusing. But first off, one color we have signed out of Valencia for two hundred and seventy-five thousand pounds. Just has enough potential that I thought he was worth taking a gamble on here. Seventeen-year-old young striker with one and a half star current ability and three star goal potential. Four star white potential. Next up, we signed another youngster out of Real Madrid, this time Juan Montero for £2.4 million. Only one star current ability, but again, three star potential with four stars of that white. He is a central midfielder who is only 16 years old. So, again, might be a player who could be useful in the future, being homegrown in club or in nations. But with the fee that we have paid for a lot of these guys, at the very least, we should be able to make a profit on them if they don't cut the grade here. At Volsinger and a bit further up, a few other signings as well. First off, we have Silla Visitas out of Olympiakos. He is a Greek right back, so quite similar to way back when, when we did sign Stamatas Chatzakis, but one and a half star current ability, three star potential gold, four star potential white there for the 18 year old out of Greece. Quite a good price for him. £800,000, which could rise to £950,000 if he does trigger some appearance clauses. In that deal, in our last signing here, was Bartlomej Moskwicz, and he comes to us from Krakowia. He is a Polish right back, one and a half star current ability, but three and a half star gold star potential with an extra star of that. Being white, he looks like quite a promising player already. That value has shot up 18 year old, who we did sign, as I said, for £2.6 million. Pounds. That means on the whole this past year, we have spent £75 million, pounds, and so far, we have received £61 million. Pounds. As well, we could still get rid of some players while the European transfer window does remain open, but we'll probably just try and loan out some players during that time. Well, unfortunately, some of the Icelandic clubs did not want to take, which is a little bit frustrating because we do have quite a few players there sitting in our first team squad at the moment who could have helped some of those teams out in their current European qualifying campaigns. Off the back of all that transfer activity, that does mean that we can do our squad overview going into this new European season. And for the most part, things look pretty similar to how they did look at the end 
of the past European campaign, just one change in our starting 11. First off, we'll go through this first team. Cal Volland still in goal for us, just a little bit better than he was this time last year. Four and a half star current ability and potential for the German international. Only 26 years old still, so he still has a lot of time here in that position. At Volsunger, next up for us is going to be our right back, Redenko Krolo. He has improved a great deal over the last few seasons. He has improved a little bit since this time last season, but these days four-star current ability and still has that five-star potential, does the 21-year-old Croatian. Then we go to our centre-backs. Ali Ramadan is going to be on one side. He has improved a little bit since this time last season. 28 years old, four-star current ability and potential. And one thing to note with Ali Ramadan in terms of domestic action, he has now been at the club long enough that he is also Icelandic alongside his usual DR Congo nationality. So he now counts as a European player, which is very useful indeed. And alongside him, fresh off the back of that Euro campaign, is Filippo Dinelli. Again, has improved a little bit since this time last season. Sees his four-star current ability there at the top, but on the side here, three and a half stars. But nonetheless, he is a very, very good option alongside Ali Ramadan. At centre-back, and then we get to the one change to this team from last season, the player that we did sign out of Chelsea to come and to fill in for Louis Herrera. It was the one area I thought we could improve a little bit on. He hasn't improved too much since we did sign him earlier on this window for around about £50 million, and that is Jonathan Berger from Belgian four-star current ability and potential for a player who can play centre-back but is going to play left-back for us. Don't mind the fact that he's good in the air. We have been getting caught out like that occasionally so far in past European campaigns, but he is the one change that we have made to this first choice 11 going into this new European season. Then we get to the midfield, exactly the same as it was last season. Basaro Gay, 25 years old. His ability has actually regressed a little bit since this time last season. In fact, Alain Basicki arguably might be a better player than him these days. I might need to check on that going into the start of the Champions League campaign, but he has been a great player for us since we signed him quite a few years ago now out of Senegal. And because we signed him quite a few years ago, he, alongside Ali Ramadan, also has Icelandic nationality these days, as well as that Senegalese nationality. So that also means he is an EU player, which makes him all the more valuable for us here. At Volsunga, in the box-to-box -box midfield role, back from the Euros a bit earlier than expected, as we mentioned, Lasana Dombia continues to improve does the best player at the club, five-star current ability and potential for the world-class midfielder at only 25 years old and alongside him, his fellow Frenchman in the Mazala role in Benvenu Bayer, his four-star current ability and potential and has improved quite a bit since this time last season. Then we make our way forward to the front, free fresh off his good campaign. At Copper America, we have Augustine Agatire continues to improve four-star current ability and four and a half star potential out on the left hand side. Onya Mizkic off the back of his win at the Euros with Serbia where he did play quite well. He's actually regressed a little bit since this time last season. So that's something we might need to keep a bit of an eye on. But we have noticed that ability with him can fluctuate quite regularly between three stars and four stars depending on form. But he is quite a good solid option for us out there at left wing. It was actually the player of the Champions League final at the end of last week, and then up front, we do still have Adam Saki, world-class striker here out of Morocco. He's improved just a little bit since this time last season and does still have his four-star current ability and potential, and then we work our way into what is the backup team for this upcoming season, which looks like this. You have just seen Robson and goal before, obviously, the replacement for Puerto Hueluvic. Pedro Lemos is our backup right back for this upcoming season, homegrown club and nation, the 21-year-old Portuguese Pretty similar in terms of ability to this time last season, but as we saw when he did come off the bench last season, actually quite a good attacking right back, so hopefully he will do the same this upcoming season. At centre-back, Richard Waswa is one of our options. He's regressed a little bit since this time last season, but is still two and a half star current ability and four star potential alongside him, a player who we did sign last year in Gabriel Kapan, the young Croatian at 19 years old, has improved quite a bit since this time last season, two and a half star current ability, four and a half star white potential for him. So hopefully he keeps improving and might be the next cab off the rank should someone like Ali Ramadan or Filippo Dinelli start to get 
on the decline out at left back is our left back from this past European season. And Louis Herrera has actually gone up to three star current ability, still his four and a half star potential as well has improved quite a bit since this time last season has the young Mexican. In terms of the backup defensive midfielder, this is the one position which is probably putting the most pressure on a player in the first team, as mentioned earlier, Elaine Basicki, quite similar in terms of ability to this time last season, is not far off Basaroge these days and might in fact even be better. As I said, might need to check that before we do get into the European season come tomorrow's episode, but very, very good option for us there, both off the bench for the first team and in this backup team is the Belgian alongside him. When he is fit, it will be Bruno Costa, still currently injured, recovering from that big injury that he suffered prior to the Champions League campaign, obviously, that has affected his recent progress, but still a very high potential midfielder there is the backup box-to-box. -box. Out of Portugal alongside him, Narek Voskanian, who is showing a little bit of improvement since this time last season, which is good to see. He has two and a half star current ability and does still have that five star potential, even if the last star of that is white, which is good to see from the homegrown club and nation player in the front three. You did see Melizio Menga before, a recent signing here at Volsunga. Christopher Allegard is out on the left wing. He is a Danish 19 year old with fairly decent potential, three star current ability, and four stars of that potential. I think we'll give him a little bit of game time in this backup team over Jonata this season and up front. We have Haiku Kunzi, a pretty good backup striker there to Adam Saki. has regressed just a little bit since we did sign him, but is still quite a good option for us there with that two and a half star current ability and four star potential and some other players who you might see this upcoming season, the likes of Premzil Bokic, who was our third choice left back. He's improved a little bit since this time last season, still only 19 years old and is homegrown club and nation already. So we'll definitely keep hold of him being a player we don't need to register for the Champions League for a few more years. Erdin Scheite is our fifth choice centre back. He is a 19 year old out of Kosovo, has improved a fair bit since this time last season, quite similar to Kapan in terms of his potential, but not quite there the same amount in terms of his current ability, but he'll certainly get some game time when one of our other centre backs needs a little bit of a rest. Also on the bench players who you might see a little bit of players like Joe Nata, as I said, Allegard's probably going to start over him in most games, but he'll be a good bench option for us, of course, seeing as he can cover both of the attacking wings as well as striker. And as well as that, we do have Alvalo Arce. He is our third choice box-to-box -box midfielder. He'll get a little bit of appearance time at the moment, while Bruno Costa is out injured. Two and a half star current ability for him with three and a half star potential. He's improved a little bit since we did sign him on the cheap around about this time last season and going down a little bit further here on this list we do still have players like Patrick Nygaard homegrown club if we got a good bid for him from a fellow Icelandic club we might let him go and also down here the likes of Fabio Maliano with his two star current ability two and a half star potential same situation as with Patrick Nygaard but he's a bit younger so probably a player being homegrown club and nation we will look to keep hold of and going down a little bit further and there's players who ideally we are going to loan out for this upcoming season. So I think that's most of the players that you do need to know for this upcoming European season. As I said, just the one change in that first choice 11 with Jonathan Berger starting over Louis Herrera. And that first team is what we are going to put out for this upcoming Super Cup tie against RB Leipzig, the Europa League winners from last season. A quick look at these guys. We can't judge too much yet because the Bundesliga Hasn't started, but they're a decent team. We've had a pretty good record against them so far in this save. We did finish above them in a Champions League group before they did win their first Europa League. They do play five at the back, which we can sometimes struggle against. But according to our scouts, if we do go back to our home page, they are not as good as us, but could spring a surprise if we're not careful. So hopefully we can pick up another win here and stay the super champions of Europe for the second season in a row, but we'll get into the action for today's episode and come back shortly. And as I said, try and win the UEFA Super Cup for the second straight season. And here are the team sheets for the Super Cup. There we are, as we ran through before in that squad overview, just that one change at left back burger coming in for Herrera, but we do have an extended bench here for the Super Cup. There are RB Leipzig, a few names there that you might be recognizable with Tullus Magno at left wing as well as Caligari at right back but as mentioned before apparently they're a team 
not as strong as us. So hopefully we can win the Super Cup here for the second season in a row. And going forward to the 15 minute mark here, we have our first highlight. Dumbia with a corner and Ramadan just puts that wide. Not the greatest angle. We do go close there. Still nil all after 15 minutes. And very shortly off the back of that first highlight, we are down the other end here as RB Leipzig. We're on the attack, but we get possession back. But then Lasana Dumbia tries to hoof that deep forward to Adam Saki and RB Leipzig with those five at the back are able to tidy things up. A nice ball there from Magno for Douglas, who does put that away in the bottom right corner, albeit it did look like first indications there were that he might be offside, but we are going to wait for VAR, and the goal has been awarded. So after 18 minutes, it is RB Leipzig, who do take a lead here. Talos Magno with the assist ball over the top. In fact, I think that might be Filippo Donelli, who has just played him onside. So indeed, he was onside there, so it wasn't how it first looked there to my eye, but RB Leipzig strike first here in the Super Cup final, 1-0 to them after 18 minutes. And only one minute off the back of that opening goal, we have a throw in here right on the halfway line. Can we strike back immediately like we would like to do? And Benvenu Bayer here finds a little bit of space inside the box on the left-hand side. Jonathan Berger holds things up, plays that back to Bassero Gay, tries to put a ball over the top there for Redenko Krolo, but Talis Magno is there yet again to tidy things up, albeit we do get possession back, but as I said, hopefully we can strike back pretty soon here in this one, and Mizkic makes his way towards the byline here, puts the ball far post for Aga Tegere. it's a little bit iffy there at the back from Suzuki in goal for RB Leipzig, but he does make the save, and they are still 1-0 up here after 20 minutes. And in fact, just off the back of me trying to wrap that up, there is another highlight here, RB Leipzig trying to get on the attack, but they play a ball forward there, and Redenko Krolo will head that back to Carl Wallen. So a few highlights here in and around the 15 to 20 minute period, and we look to play out from the back here and get it forward to Ben Venu Bayer, just takes his time on the ball, plays this forward for Adam Saki, who looks like he's going to take the defense on, albeit this is from quite a tight angle, but Suzuki does absolutely nothing in goal. And what an individual goal that is for Adam Saki. And not too long after going down, even though there's been a few highlights since then, we do grab an equalizer. And in the end, it's a real bit of individual brilliance here from Saki. As I said, not too sure what Suzuki's doing in goal here for RB Leipzig, but a lot of work that Saki had to do there. And he puts that in the back of the net. One all about halfway through the first half. And we go forward to the half hour mark for our next highlight. We have a throw in here inside the final third. Can we make the most of it? Berger puts the ball over the top, but sucks as there to tie things up, albeit we do still keep possession here right on the attack outside of the RB Leipzig box. Will that goal to Adam Saki allow us to get on the front foot here before halftime? Mizkic plays that back. I believe that would have been two gay. And here's a chance for Aga Tigre, but that shot a little bit weak this time. Suzuki makes the save. Still one all with 15 minutes left in the first half. And that is half time in the Super Cup. One all and it's hard to argue with that because looking at the stats in the XG graph, things are very, very even so far in this one. But most of our guys are playing well. So I don't think we'll make too many changes. Hopefully we can do what we did here to Arsenal this time last season and really run over the top of RB Leipzig in the second half. Albeit it looks like from their team selection, Leipzig taking this a lot more seriously than Arsenal did this time last season. But encouraging signs, hopefully we get on top of them here a little bit more in the second half. One all as we get back underway. And 10 minutes into the second half, we have the first highlight RB Leipzig here with a throw. But early stages in this half, we have started to get on top of them a little bit in terms of stats. So hopefully that's how things do continue here. But Alves makes his way down the left-hand side, albeit good work there from Aga Tegere to get the ball back. And hopefully we can look to build from the back here and get a chance to start off the second half, and Dumbia here is on the ball, we'll play that back to Ramadan, and switch that out to Denali on the left-hand side, as we do take our time here to play out from the back, the new man Berger plays that one forward to Mizkic, Bay will try and find somewhere on the right-hand side, but unfortunately, no one out there, and Talos Magno starts to jog his way through our defence, and actually does a really good job, gets a shot off, but thankfully, that goes over the bar, so a bit dangerous there for Magno, and it remains one all coming up to the hour mark. And we've just got past the hour mark in this one. We're going to make our first substitution. Ognar Mizkic only going okay. We'll give Alagard a bit of game time here with a half hour left. And only a few minutes off the back of that first substitution, we are going to make another one. Lasana Dumbia down to a red heart. We could probably keep him out there if we needed to, but it is a preseason game, truth be told. So we're going to take things safe here. Basicki will come on for him. 
and Gator move forward into the box to box role. And about 10 minutes off the back of that second substitution, we are going to make our last one. Now, I think there's a few players out there on red hearts, but the player in terms of rating who is struggling the most is Agatere Fresh off the back of a hat trick. I think we're going to bring on one of our new signings here. And Mauricio Menga with 15 minutes left, still locked up at one all. And very shortly off the back of that last substitution, it is a throw in here for Leipzig, I believe, albeit we've got an issue here where a few players' uniforms have turned black. So this is going to make things a little bit interesting. But in the end, despite that distraction, it is RB Leipzig who pick up a goal. Not exactly sure what was happening there because I was trying to figure out which players were with the ones in those black uniforms. This could get a little bit interesting come the latter stages of this one, but it was Bar here on the ball, played that one to Bergstrom, a and Michael Douglas there in a lot of space, beats Carl Volen at that far side, and just like that, Leipzig, they have a lead back here with about 13 minutes left, albeit right off the back of that. Another highlight is Krollo, who is also in a black uniform, wins the ball back for us there, and we look to play out from the back, and hopefully we can strike back soon and get ourselves back into this game late on. Rodinko Krollo plays that one, to Basaro Gay, it looks like we're going to try and get something going here down our right hand side, Menga off the bench, we'll play that back to Krollo, nice ball over the top for Adam Saki, nice touch to take that around Suzuki, and just like that we grab an equaliser, so a quick fire double, one from each team, and it is now 2 all with just over 10 minutes left here in the UEFA Super Cup of 2036, Rodinko Krollo, nice ball over the top and a very well timed run that from Saki, takes that around Suzuki, Beats him in his near post. Two all here, as I said, with just over 10 minutes left. And just about to enter injury time in the Super Cup. So at the moment, it does look like this one might go to extra time, albeit we are getting very close now to full time. And there is one more highlight. Still a few players here in black uniforms from both teams, which is going to make things a little bit interesting here in the latter stages in terms of commentary. But we'll see what happens here in this preseason matchup for the European competitions. Hopefully, we can at least hold out here and try and take this game to extra time, or hopefully this highlight actually ends up in our favour. But at the moment, it is RB Leipzig who are holding possession fairly well. A Tunde off the back of getting that assist for the third goal. And this time, Tullus Magno, nice ball there forward. For an attacker, Carl Volland doesn't even bother trying to make a save. And Adam puts that away inside the far post. I think we're going to try and up the tempo here for the latter stages of this one also go a bit more direct and be a bit more expressive because there's not long left now and that goal might be enough for RB Leipzig to grab the Super Cup here for 2036. It's a good finish just inside that far post, albeit a little bit disappointing that Carl Wallen didn't even try and make a save there. We'll see if anything does happen here inside the last minute. It's been a very even game, but RB Leipzig have somewhat upset us here and they will pick up the UEFA Super Cup, albeit don't mind losing this one if the trade-off is the fact that we have won the Champions League at the end of last week. And if we can go deep in it yet again this upcoming season, I won't mind as well. So it's a little bit of a disappointing result first up here for this new European season. But in the end, it's only the Super Cup. But for now, we're not so super RB Leipzig are the Super Cup champions for 2036. We'll come back shortly. We should have our youth intake and we can do a little bit of a run through of that. And only a few days off the back of that loss in that Super Cup final, we do have the youth intake here for 2036 at Volsung. It isn't going to take too long because it's absolutely awful. Just one player with free star potential, and that is Arnor Igni Finson. He is a player who will hopefully turn out to be a useful midfielder for us, but he is probably the only player who we are going to sign out of this season's youth intake because everyone else, even the New Zealander there, looks a little bit average, probably players who we aren't going to sign. So it's a pretty rubbish youth intake and we'll come back shortly and we should be able to start running through what has happened with the other Icelandic teams in UEFA qualifying. And we've gone for two weeks off the back of that pretty average youth intake. And as you can see, we are about to take part in the group stage draw for the Champions League, where we are the top seed, of course, being the defending champions of Europe for the second straight season. But before then, we're going to do a check-in on what has happened with the other Icelandic clubs and the European qualifying campaigns before then as well. A quick update on what we have done off the back of that Super Cup. We've played two games in the league and picked up two fairly comfortable victories. About to take on Phil Kier in our next match off camera off the back of this group stage draw, which we do have. But what that means for the league table, we have already qualified 
for European football next season. It does look like we should be qualifying for the group stages of the Champions League. Yet again, 13 points clear of HK with six games in hand. Phil Kier could jump above them depending on what happens in their next game, which is against us. But at the moment, it does look like it is our title to lose and we should be bringing that one home fairly quickly. We might even have that wrapped up before we come back for the first game of the group stages of the Champions League in tomorrow's episode. And that might mean we can give you guys our transfer budget then as well. Just to give you guys an indication, at the moment, we do still have £27 million left over, despite all those youngsters that we did sign, as well as those replacements for both Well Lurvik and Hans Voss as well. But before we take part in the group stage draw, for the Champions League this season, we need to see if we are going to be joined by anyone else in that competition. And that starts off with HK, who entered in the third qualifying round on the league path side. And unfortunately, HK had quite a tough draw there. They had to take on a team who finished in a qualifying spot in France last season. And as Jacques that was always going to be a really, really tough task for them. And in the end, they did get beaten in both legs. They go out 4-1 on aggregate there to French opposition, which isn't too surprising, but because they were dumped out in the third qualifying round, that means that they didn't have to play a playoff down in the Europa League. They just go straight into the group stages of the Europa League's HK. Miss out on the Champions League, but it doesn't hurt them too much. They are going to be in the group stages of the Europa League this season. And I was about to update you guys on what had happened in Europa League and Conference League qualifying, but that actually hasn't finished yet. There's a few games taking place on the same day as this Champions League group stage draw does take place. We'll do another update off the back of this, but HK definitely in the Europa League, and we should have one more team in the group stages of one of those lower division competitions, as well as Nats KR are uh, in a Europa League playoff as well. But we'll do an update on that off the back of this group stage draw, seeing as those games haven't quite been completed yet, but it is time for this group draw for the Champions League this season. We are in pot one alongside Man United, Ray Al Madrid, PSG, RB Leipzig, Bayern Munich, Inter Milan, and Sporting out of Portugal. Pot 2, this is a really strong pot 2 this season. Chelsea, Manchester City, Juventus, Liverpool, Barcelona, Hertha Berlin, AC Milan, or Sevilla. So no real easy options there. Ideally, I think maybe if we can drop to someone Hertha Berlin or below, that would be quite suitable. But the chances are we get someone quite good there as second seed in our group down to pot 3, which also. Looks quite strong this season. Dortmund, Lille, Valencia, Napoli, Ajax, Rangers, Dynamo, Zagreb, or Porter. If we can get someone on the bottom half of that, I think that would be an ideal situation. Taking on someone in between Dortmund or Napoli might make things a little bit group of death like potentially in the Champions League this season, even though our record the past few years has been exceptional and pot for the teams that we absolutely should be beating. This is Underlex, Sparta Prague, Dynamo Kiev, FC Cologne. Galatasaray, RB, Salzburg, Motherwell and Ajaccio as long as we can avoid one of the teams potentially out of one of those top five leagues I think we'll be fine there with the fourth seed in our Champions League group this season but we'll quickly get through pot one of course because we are pot one and that doesn't really have too much impact we are the last team out of the hat though in group eight so we can keep an eye out and see exactly who we are going to get here out of pot two first up Juventus will join PSG Hertha Berlin alongside Man United. It is Milan who will join Sporting out of Portugal. Liverpool in the same group as Ray Al Madrid. So that's looking like a tough group alongside Group A at the moment. Chelsea in there with RB Leipzig, the Europa League champions, and of course the Super Cup champions. Group F, Bayern are joined by Sevilla. That leaves Manchester City or Barcelona. I really hope that we get Barcelona because Man City have been a bit of a fall on our side so far. In the save, and we get Man City in our group, which is pretty brutal. So potentially, for the first time in a little while, we might be in for a little bit of a fight here to try and finish top of our group. But pot free, Dortmund go out first, which is nice. Ideally, we get someone Ajax or below. As I mentioned earlier, Valencia will join Group B. Ajax in Group C, Rangers in Group D. So that really does leave things 50-50 here. Ideally, we get either Dynamo Zagreb or Porto and can't avoid either Lille or Napoli. And now we really want Dynamo Zagreb because Porto have gone to Group E, Napoli into Group F. Lille do go into Group G, so thankfully things get a little bit easier here with the third seed on paper anyway. We get Dynamo Zagreb alongside Man City. And in terms of pot four, as I said, as long as we can hopefully avoid someone 
from one of the top five leagues and halfway through that would be FC Cologne. But if we could avoid those guys, I think we'll be in a decent place. And thankfully they do. They go in Group G. And that means that our group is going to be made up of us, Man City, Dynamo, Zagreb and Sparta Prague. We should definitely make our way out of that group. But whether we finish on top of it or not is a completely different story. A big matchup in the group stages here between both us and Manchester City. will be one pretty good team there, which is going to have to do things tough as a second seed in the first stages of the knockouts of the Champions League. When we do get into the start of 2037, but a quick look there. In terms of potential groups of death, I think Group A is the obvious one. PSG, Juventus and Dortmund, all very, very good teams. That could be an interesting group. But apart from that, I think the other groups, it does look like there are two teams who should quite comfortably be making their way through to the knockouts in those ones. And as I said, hopefully one of those groups is with us and Manchester City. And hopefully we can finish above those guys and try and get an easier path in the first knockout round come the start of 2037. But we'll go forward a little bit further off the back of this and just wrap things up in terms of Europa League and Conference League qualifying. And we've gone forward a few days off the back of that Champions League group stage draw so we can check in on how the other Icelandic teams did get on in Europa League and Conference League qualifying. Nuts KR were in a playoff in the Europa League. They were 1-0 up after the first league as well, but unfortunately have blown things in the second league, albeit that was away from home. Soshi picking up a 3-0 win there. So Soshi will be in the Europa League. That means that Nuts KR are going to be in the group stages though of the Conference League, so at the very least we have one team in each competition this upcoming season. And now down to the Conference League where we travel back a little bit in time because first off it was Akranes in the second round of League Path qualifying and they got the job done here just over into Zaplesic out of Croatia. They went through on penalties after things ended up locked up at 2 all there. So Akranes were in the third qualifying round for the Conference League alongside Phil Kier, where unfortunately both of the Icelandic teams got an absolute slapping, which is very disappointing with Phil Kier in particular. They lose out to Buda Fok 6-2 on aggregate. So after making the group stages of a European competition, the last few seasons, Phil Kier get bundled out in their first qualifying round that they were in of the Conference League. So it's a little bit disappointing there for Phil Kier. Hopefully they can improve next season because at the moment it looks like they are in with a good chance of potentially even finishing in a Champions League qualifying spot for next season. Akronis, a little bit less surprising that they get bundled out there by Dundee United of Scotland, who are a team who did have the next gen winner this past season. They get beaten by them by a scoreline of 8-0. So we don't get any more teams in the Conference League group stage, just Nuts KR dropping down from a Europa League playoff. And we have had the group stage draw for that competition, and you can see that the group which they have gotten, if we steadily make our way down and find the Icelandic flag, wherever it is, is the very bottom group. So I think we'll just change how things look here so you guys can see this without me having to move the screen around too much. But on the whole, doesn't look like a terrible group there for Nats KR. They have got Dynamo Belisi out of Georgia. Not too sure if that's how you pronounce that, but nonetheless, that's a team that I've got in that group. They've also got HB Kuga out of Denmark and Valeringa out of Norway. Just looking at those names, Valeringa might be the toughest team in that group, but hopefully Nuts KR can at least pick up a few points for us here to go towards the coefficient table for this upcoming season. And up to the Europa League, where of course Nuts KR did fail in a playoff, but HK earned their way there with that loss in the third qualifying round of the Champions League. We still make our way down, so you guys can check the other groups here in the Europa League, and Group F is where HK find themselves. They are in there alongside Nice, who do seem to get quite a few Icelandic teams in their groups the past few seasons. And alongside them, we have Astana out of Kazakhstan, as well as Maccabi Haifa out of Israel. I would like to think HK might have a sneaky chance there of making their way into the knockouts of the Europa League, or at the very least finishing third in that group and doing what they did a few seasons ago and going a little bit there in the knockouts of the Conference League, but not too bad of groups there for both HK in the Europa League and Nuts KR in the Conference League. Not too bad for us as well in the Champions League, but certainly a little bit tougher than what we have had the past few seasons as we are joined by Manchester City as well as Dynamo Zagreb and Sparta Prague. But that will do it for today's episode. It was a big one, but if you did enjoy it, 
then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well we will come back tomorrow and get stuck into our first game of the champions league group stage and if we go down and have a look at that that is away at sparta prague that is a game we absolutely need to be picking up three points from if we want to keep our hopes of finishing top of this group alive with manchester city also being in the group alongside us we don't take them on until the third and fourth match day so those are back-to-back -back games against Man City which could be very very important but by then hopefully we'll be a little bit better than we were earlier against RB Leipzig in the Super Cup and as well as that we should also have a Malka Bikarin final as long as we can get past Phil here in this upcoming semi-final and hopefully we'll have that against one of Akronis and half Naf should also that's what's coming up in tomorrow's episode so until then thank you very much for watching Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.